I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Download Veely now. My name is Adam Pearson, and I've got a condition called NF1 that causes tumours to grow on my face. All my life, I've been called horrible names. Mutant, fat face, spastic, monster, elephant man. But the one that I detest is freak. He's real? Yeah. He's a fucking monster. Thank you, sir. <laughs> freak. I hate that word. I don't want to be classed a freak. But some people embrace it. I thought freak shows died out with the Victorians. Now when people shout, yo, freak show! And I turn and I go, thank you very much. It has become for me something I'm proud of being. But in fact, freak shows are still alive and kicking in the US. Once I started seeing what I could do, how much money I could make, ching, 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 ching. To finally face my inner demons, I'm heading to the spiritual home of the freak show to find out if I should stay in the freak closet or kick down the doors and embrace my inner freak. Do you think I'm a freak? I think you're whatever you want to be. We're dancing. It was a beautiful baby. Beautiful oh. blue eyes. Why are we talking about me being beautiful in the past lovely. tense? Was lovely. I'm lovely. I'm lovely. He is and lovely. He went to school and turned into a monster. <laughs> oh, you could have word. You could have worded that so much better. Well, it was. I was only five years old when I was diagnosed with neurofibromatosis, a genetic condition that led to my face turning from looking pretty normal to how I look now. The doctor said to us, don't rush down to the library and look it up in a medical dictionary, which, of course, the next day, <laughs> their dad, straight down the library, on the phone, he says, it's what the elephant man has got, you know? And I said, well, that doesn't mean you're going to look like the elephant man. The elephant man was a guy called Joseph Merrick, who lived in the 1800s. He had an extreme facial disfigurement, not dissimilar to mine. If you say name of... Freak show performer. Most people go the Elephant Man. He is the most famous oddity who ever lived. The Elephant Man was exhibited as a human curiosity in Victorian freak shows. When I hear the name the Elephant Man in my head, I get very angry and anxious because it takes me straight back to the school playground, to the kind of the taunting and the jeering and the the dark side of adolescence. Oh, look at him, mommy, he looks like the elephant man. Do you think that's a monster? That's disgusting. Followed by revulsion. At the time, it really sucked. And you feel like it's your fault. Yo, come on in, let me show the room. Twelve's a very hard age. That's when you go from primary school to secondary school. I just lost a sight in my left eye. So you go from an environment where people have kind of grown up with you, know you, have gotten used to you, to bottom of the pecking order, and also kind of the odd one out. I guess in that sense, I was an oddity. It was hell. I hate the stigma of the name the Elephant Man. And I don't like the comparison, and when people do it, it pisses me off. I hate being called that name. As an adult, I thought I'd escape the shadow of the Elephant Man, the greatest freak show performer who ever lived. But I've received an unexpected invite. 
So I've gotten this letter from a guy in America that owns and operates a freak show. Uh, hello, Adam. Do you make it out to America much? I would love for you to work with us. Not quite to how I feel. It is intriguing. I thought stuff like this had died in the Victorian period. As invites go, it's probably the weirdest job offer I've ever had. Human freaks. Yes, as the photo said, oddities. Dislike the idea of freak shows intensely. I think it's exploitative, parading people around as a spectacle for the baying masses. I don't think freak shows should exist. He just told me that he'd received an email to um, be, in, be in a freak show. I just said to him, I hope you said no. What do you think of that word? What? Freak. Freak. I don't know. My monstrosity? No. An abnormally developed individual or thing? I mean, abnormal. That That's... What does that mean? Um, well, I don't think he's of any of them, really. Why would I want someone to call my child a freak? Or, any, would, or you. Or, or, or anybody anyone. to be called a freak. I'd say um, oddities. So you're happy to be called an oddity? Hmm. You don't want to be called a name at all, do you? No, I guess I'm, I'm better with the word oddity than freak because no one hollered that at me from across the street or across the playground. But it's it's still still not great. Kind of, it's like kind of chlamydia is better than syphilis, though neither are, are desirable. I haven't had either or either. Just in case any ladies are watching, I'm good. <laughs> like completely clean. I wonder, will modern day freak shows be any different? I've decided to go to the United States to find out for myself. But first, I want to confront the freak show oddity whose existence has haunted me since I was a child. This is personal to me because I've been constantly compared my whole life to the most famous freak show performer in history. We're the same bloody night, aren't we? That's weird. I'm a lot more well built than he is. The most striking feature about him was his enormous and misshapen head. Treves, the doctor who took him to the Royal London, described the elephant man as the most disgusting specimen of humanity that I had ever seen. At no time had I ever met with such a degraded, or perverted version of a human being as this lone figure displayed. That makes me angry. Where does that then leave me? Even today, people would say similar things about me, just with a lot more medical bullshit to disguise what they're actually saying. When he wasn't on display as part of a freak show, Victorian society found Joseph Merrick's deformity so shocking, he was driven to wear a mask in public. Are we going to uh, try this then? I think um, wearing that is more degrading than kind of being stared at and jeered at. I've never ever had a hat that's me. Okay. This was incredibly claustrophobic. 
Is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This does not feel <laughs> good at all. If we can get it off, that'd be, that'd be brilliant. Okay, that. There you go. That was awful. It's just really hard to run away from him when you're wearing his bloody hat, isn't it? How much could um, Joseph Merrick have made as a freak show performer? Um, anything up to about £20 a week, I suppose, uh, which is around about £1,000 in today's money. Maybe there is something to this freak show thing, after all. £1,000 a week sounds quite good. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm missing a trick. Freak shows displaying human curiosities became popular in America in the 1840s, and up until their decline in the early 20th century drew huge crowds. Now for the big show, the event that the kids and the grown-ups have been waiting for for months. Biological rarities, human marvels, and even sexual oddities toured the states alongside sword swallowers and fire eaters to shock and entertain the viewing public. Everyone is headed for the big top to thrill to and cheer the fun makers, daredevils, freaks, and ferocious performing animals. Freak show performers such as Jojo the Dog Face Boy and Tom Thumb became huge stars. But by 1900, human novelties became considered distasteful. And in America today, there are only a handful of freak shows left. I'm not convinced that modern day freak shows are in any way different to the ones of old and can't understand why anybody would allow their deformity or condition to be exploited. I've heard about a performer from Detroit who's preparing to join a freak show, and I want to find out why. Morning. Hey, how are you doing? Bethany was born with ectrodactyly, also known as lobster claw syndrome. I like her hand. Well, a lot of people call them like lobster claws because that's what they resemble. It's a mutation of the 13th chromosome. Because of her condition, she had her leg amputated when she was just three. Yeah, I just, I scoot and swing. That hasn't stopped her learning circus skills for her freak show debut. Why are you learning this? I like fire. I'm kind of a fire bug. Okay. This is something I've always wanted to do. How would you feel about um, terms such as kind of freak show, oddity, Lobster girl, do you, do you find them a bit crass and sensationist or is it something that you embrace? I think that when people hear freak show, they're thinking the crazy guy in a steel cage shaking and rattling chains and people may label us because of, you know, the deformities that we were born with, but we're out to educate and show the beauty in the deformities and the oddities. You know, we're showing people that because we're different doesn't mean we can't be beautiful. I thought I'd be like, why are you joining a freak show? This is degrading. But she spoke about it so passionately that I couldn't knock it. Raven, this is Adam. Hi, Lindsay. Pleasure to meet you. You too. Jamner, this is Adam. Hi, Lindsay. Pleasure. Yeah, pleasure to meet you. Bethany's condition has not been passed on to her children. Whilst they support her decision to join the freak show, they also worry for her. Well, my mom's using it to change people's view of special people with special skills better than other normal people. Growing up with a deformity of any kind, makes you a stronger person. I think mom is strong enough. My problem is I just don't want people to criticize her. I had a bus driver today. She goes and says, 
is your mom a freak? And I go, no. Heck yeah, baby. And I, I was going, no. I gave her that look like you just trying to keep it in because she didn't understand. And I was going, you know, no, she's not. But I not get why her children are concerned about their mother being able to freak when they, they don't see her that way. They just see her as, as mom. At least he mm -hmm. can run. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's gonna bother me, but I know she's gonna have fun. But I promise you, I'll, I'll, I'll take good care of her. <laughs> if you tease on parade. Yeah. Boom. Oh, yeah. I love this one. Come here, squeeze me. Yeah, I love you. No more tears. Bethany's leaving her family behind to travel over a thousand miles to Texas to join the freak show. And I'm going with her. The Elephant Man is coming. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the world where the bazaar is beautiful. Are you bored of 10 fingers and 10 toes? Tired of one normal looking head? Two boring lower limbs? Bethany's joining a circus oh, called the 999 Eyes. It's one of only a handful of freak shows left in the United States, and the first one I've ever been to. Mother Nature is a mad scientist. We all have our own uh, differences genetically. It's very tribal-like as well, but, I mean, looking out for each other. And... We're all so close-knit. It does feel like quite a bit like a family. Ain't those freaks just grand? Bethany's debut performance with her new freak family is a warm-up, so no fire breathing. Please welcome, perhaps the newest member of the Cerise Salas show, Dolly the Human Cyborg, ladies and gentlemen! She's simply sharing with the crowd her experience of growing up with lobster claw syndrome. Kids go, um, ma'am, what, what happened to your fingers? Um, where did they go? I go, I was really bad as a child, and if you're not good to your parents, Watch out, they may cut yours off too. I get a kick out of it. So for somebody else to actually see it the way I see it and laugh with me and not at me is amazing. Calm down. You're getting out of hand. Black Scorpion is the founding father of this family of freaks. I was born this way, but... He has the same condition as Bethany. Extra. Exactly. If it wasn't for the word freak, I wouldn't be on stage. It's like a shout out. And that's one of the things about the 999 guys taking the word freak and trying, you know, making it a positive. Do you think I'm a freak? I think you're whatever you want to be. I don't like being called deformed. I feel like I'm perfectly formed. This was the way I was supposed to come out. Adam, do you feel like you're a freak in the closet? Ah. Oh. Bloody hell. Um, I'm starting to get my head around the idea of owning, owning the word freak. I've only ever heard it used towards me as a term of derision in, in the school playground. So I've only ever had, it, had the experience of it being used as, as a slur. All, all I wanted to do was finish school and put my penis in something. <laughs> and it was like painfully obvious that that wasn't, wasn't gonna happen. So do I need to just grow the hell up and get over it and just kick the closet door in and get on stage? If you feel like you wanna get on stage, I think you should. I think you should do whatever empowers you. It's what's inside our souls. And let me tell you something, you're beautiful just talking to you. Like, I feel like you, looking at you is like looking at a reflection of me in many ways, and you're beautiful. Black Scorpion told me I was beautiful. It was a really heartfelt thing to say. I wasn't entirely sure how I, I felt about that. rarely happens, like, I think twice in my life. Hi, Mom, how are you doing? Oh, Adam, hello, darling, how are you? 
I'm good, thank you. I'm good. So you all right? Yeah, yeah. I'm jaded. No, yeah. I'm, no, I'm good. I'm good. Just call me to say hey. Do you like my new hat? I thought it was very impressive. But yeah, I, you know, we found a hat that fit me, so I thought this may never happen again. <laughs> it's not to be sneezed at, is it? Is it no. Good? But are you are you okay without me? Are you not kind of completely lonely? Um, it's not too bad. But anyway, I will love you and leave you, okay? All right then, sweetheart. Thanks for ringing. It's lovely to talk to you. Take care, Mum. Bye. Oh, Mum. I miss her. Well, I thought I would. I found a hat that fit. Las Vegas is the entertainment capital of the world, and I'm here in search of freak show stars. It's a mecca for cabaret artists and has always embraced the bizarre. With an entertainment industry worth billions of dollars, there's money to be made here for modern day freak show performers. If you're a performer, this is this is the place you come. Las Vegas is very much the main stage. The scene is going to be a weird one. It's Halloween. We're going to a place called the Fright Dome. It's going to be a very kind of Halloween Fright Night kind of vibe. And I hate Halloween. Showtime! Step right up. Jake works for himself, hosting alternative cabaret nights and running a dwarf wrestling company. Hey, Jake, how you doing? Hey, buddy, how you doing? Yeah, good, thank you. So, yeah. freak shows. Is it lucrative? Is me being a little bit PC and maybe a bit of a girl about the whole thing, missing out on a big, to put it bluntly, cash cow? Vegas is known as the glittery asshole of the states. We make money here. This is where we get all of our big bucks at. What can you run in Vegas as an oddity? I charge clubs anywhere from $3,500 to $10,000 a show. Nice. That's giving me a bit of food for thought. Well, so could I work here? Yes, you would actually work perfectly fine in a freak show, but you would have to be comfortable with it because you're going to be in front of large crowds yeah. of people staring at you like you were in school. I don't, I don't like being stared at, and there's all these people going, what's wrong with that man's face? So yeah. do I need to get over it? Yes. You're going to... Okay. No offense, you're never going to change the way you look, right? No. Unless if you go in for some plastic surgery. Is it true that natural born's a freak show in royalty? 100%. There are people that join the freak show that will learn the sword swallowing or fire breathing. But there's natural borns that are freaks like you and I. They consider us gold because we don't need to have an act. We don't need to have a performance. You are a rare oddity. There's only one other person like you. And he is and dead. And he's dead. So, I mean, you're one of a kind. Accept it and flaunt it. If you can get over the anger of people staring at you and just accept it as you being different and say, hey, this is me, I look beautiful, take my picture. If you have too much political correctness about yourself, you will not fit into the sideshow business. I was very PC when I was a kid. I hated the word midget. But once I started seeing what I could do, how much money I could make, and if I had just accepted the word and marketed it, ching, 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 on money, that PC correctness was gone. <laughs> I decided to take Jake up on his word and see if I can make money for the first time out of my freakiness on the Las Vegas streets. With a face like this, I deliberately don't normally go out on Halloween. Really anxious. Woo! Woo! I'm acutely aware that my face is, in a way, a commodity. And that it kind of sparks interest and curiosity. And then curiosity can create cash. What's your name? Adam. Adam. And you are? DJ. DJ. Pleasure to meet you, DJ. Pleasure to meet you, man. Thanks for coming to Vegas to join the sideshow scene. What do you reckon? Oh, man. How do you think I do? You belong in Vegas, buddy. Yeah, man. For sure. Well, I just talked to you, and I feel better already, so... Awesome. Want to do a uh, picture? Do I'd a pic love to have a picture, man. Seattle? See all the people? Yeah. It's awesome, man. Yeah, yeah. Ve so much Vegas, again. baby. Vegas. <laughs> Fucking awesome.
Anche. One dollar. It seems that on the streets of Vegas are an object of desire, not derision. Pale imitation. No casting? No. Natural. Natural born on the same idea. Natural? Yep. $18 in half an hour just for standing in the fucking street. I have greatly underestimated my earning power in freak shows and side shows. This was very dirty money. I felt like I've made $18, but I've sold my soul. As much as I've heard about empowerment, reclaiming the term freak, I still think, to a degree, that this is exploitation. I've heard of a freak show performer who's been a headline act worldwide. But despite the opportunity to earn big bucks, has turned his back on the circus because of exploitation. In the circus, they call me a uh, workman, monkey boy, a werewolf. Ladies and gentlemen, the wolf boy! Chewy lives in a small town in Mexico. He has a rare condition called hypertrichosis. Hola, Adam. Hola, un chusto. The one and only wolf boy. You are freak show royalty. It's amazing. I think it's unique. I was 11 when I first started at the fair. We didn't earn anything. They exploited us, and we were just little children. I felt imprisoned. All, all these freak shows, they want the wolf boy in, in their shows. Yes, you know, but it traumatized me. In the circus, after every show, and this happens in every country, there is alcohol and women. There are a lot of things for you to get lost in. Personally, I think it was difficult for me. I didn't want to accept myself as God made me. Okay, Chewie, bring in a big guy. Okay. Let's do this one. You got little arms. Awesome. Done. Despite being a headline act that travel in circuses all across the world, Chewie now shuns the attention he attracts preferring instead to work 12-hour days on a local rubbish tip. He paints a very different picture than what I've heard so far. And he, he talks about he only, he only did it for the money and he felt exploited and, and mistreated, which is sort of how what I thought I'd hear from a lot of people. But then he's got posters and, of it all and has all these mementos of it in his house, which needs to take it if he hated it that much? Why is it? Why is it up on his walls? And I thought he'd have made a lot more money doing it than he actually has. Unlike Chewie, his cousin Alex still loves the circus life, and I've been invited along to watch a rehearsal. Hola. Bien, bien. Hola, me llamo Adam. 
Alex Aceves. There are only 50 known cases of werewolf syndrome in the world. Chewie and Alex's family make up 30 of them. This is possibly the weirdest table I've ever sat at. We've got two wolf boys and an elephant man in the same trailer. Yes, it's a unique moment, likely ever to be repeated. So, uh, with, uh, with a face like mine, could I work at the circus? Your face is magnificent for the circus. We never seen something like that in the circus. If you are in a circus and they present you as the elephant man, people will be filled with a morbid curiosity. Your face will be great. Yes, it's really unique, because we don't know if there will be another elephant man for another hundred years. For me, growing up, I always, that was a name, people used to call me as a, a term of derision. And everyone I've spoken to so far has said that whilst there are kind of elements of exploitation, that's not exactly how it works now. And this has all given me real kind of food for thought. And I've, I've spent 30 years trying to distance myself from Joseph Merrick. But I haven't realized how remarkably similar we are. It absolutely brought a tear to my eye, kind of, just then, that there might not be another elephant man for 150 years. I don't know how to word this quite properly. It's kind of weird. I feel like by acknowledging that I'm similar to the Elephant Man, Joseph Merrick, I'm somehow accrediting all the negativity and everything the bullies at school said. Chewing this because I had a massive impact on me, and I think that was the kind of the straw that broke the camel's back. I think Chewie and Alex definitely think I'm more unique than they are. The point of coming here was to immerse myself in this whole world. And slowly but surely, my defense has been kind of chipped away at. And now I think I took a big step forward today. It just feels like a massive weight's been lifted off my shoulders. I can now say things like Freak Show and Elephant Man and Wolf Boy and not feel like I'm not feel disgusted at myself. I'm following in the footsteps of Joseph Merrick, also known as the Elephant Man, the most famous freak, oddity, freak show performer who ever lived. I think it was a, a good man, maybe even a great man, who just wanted to be understood. And I think that's what beats at the heart of everyone, this desire for acceptance, that desire to love and be loved. Spending time with other natural-born oddities has given me a sense of belonging that I've never felt before. I, I'm absolutely a, a, a freak to all, to all intents and purposes. No matter what definition you use, I am a freak. And now I need to make a choice if I'm going to get all upset and PC about it or embrace it and be a rock star about the whole thing. But embracing it doesn't necessarily mean taking to the stage 
The freak show has now entered the 21st century. We're the Hamels. I'm Michelle. I'm Dan. I'm Dad. And these are our twin daughters, Cece and Kate. We are a family of five, and what makes us so special is that we are all small. Dan and Michelle is in Maryland with their kids. The whole family has acorn dysplasia, a full of dwarfism. They have a hit TV series and earn more filming every season than they do the rest of the year from their normal jobs. Hi, Adam. Hi, Dan. How are you doing, man? Good. How are you? Really good, thank you. Pleased to meet you. Sorry, I get nervous meeting kids because it's a lot to take in. Um... Yeah, I get it. Jack, can oh, you come hi. say hi? Hi. How are you doing, Jack? Can you come, like, get high five? Yo. Yes. Get yeah. high five. Cece. Cece, no do you see Mr. Adam over there? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to know why his face looks different? No. Okay. Oh, yeah, fine. Yes. <laughs> Jack, do Next you? Question. Okay, yeah. You do? Okay. There you go. It's okay. Just so, say, yeah. much, so much like you, I was, I was born different. I have a condition that just means my face looks different. It doesn't mean I'm silly or can't be cool and funny and awesome. It just means I'm different, just like you three. Do you think you guys would have gotten the, the TLC show had you not been little people? I certainly you would wouldn't have gotten think it so. just for our personalities. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think you're right. How, how do you feel about words like kind of freak? And I know that um, Michelle hates the word midget. We are not midgets. Like, I definitely don't like the word. What particularly do you not? That's, that's a very derogatory term for little people. No, I, I get that. I never used to write the term freak. And so, why do people put us on, on TV? Is it a freak show? I don't know. We try to be entertaining. That's our number one thing. And we try to teach through osmosis that little people are sort of are just another neighbor down the street. <laughs> and we have a, a show and a means to do that. You know, there's got, always going to be a million people you can't convince or can't change. But sometimes you have something different, you have to own it and be the freak show. How do the other kids, how do they mix with the other children? I, I think it's a non-issue in our own neighborhood. I think they're just so used to the kids. It's very it's important that they're playing outside. I love when they play outside. I didn't play outside. I didn't have that many kind of friends to play with. Well, I guess outside wasn't my jam. Other kids weren't my, my jam. You can take one home with you if you wish today. You oh, can either have Cece well, or you can have Kate. You take this one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Meeting the Hamels has made me realize that I've actually been part of a freak show all along. I like them, they're really normal. They are just choosing to live their lives on TV. And I certainly wouldn't have done as well in TV if it hadn't been for how I looked. The internet has also opened up a whole new world of work for people like me, who once might have been sidelined into circus life. Victorian freak shows often had adult-only tents displaying a variety of human curiosities, from the biologically weird to the sexual oddities. Nowadays, people with sexual fetishes will pay big bucks to watch disabled people online. Of all the things I thought I'd be doing on this trip, meeting a disabled porn star was not one, was not one of them. Cindy Lou lives in LA and makes a living posting pictures and videos of herself on the internet. I do videos, I do modeling, I do chats. I'm a gilf. You guys know what a milf is, right? Yes, you are, you are no, a gilf. Do you know what a milf is? Wait, wait, look. Yes, mama likes to fuck look, and look. then See? gilf is grandmother. Oh my God, you're the first person that's gotten it. Oh I'm God. a complete paraplegic and I've been a paraplegic for 22 years. I can't okay. walk, so. I roll. I don't know why they like this pose so much, but they do. 
It's because it's legs are kimbo, isn't it? It's I kinda... like the legs open or like flopped on the side. <laughs> okay. Yay, me. Okay. Awesome. Okay, come on. Cindy has regular clients who pay to have video calls with her. You wouldn't want my broken body. I do want your fucking broken body. I don't want to put those useless legs over my shoulders. If I don't listen, you keep my chair. I gotta pleasure you to get it back. You pleasure me to get it back, yeah. So, what do you think? Um. Say interesting again, watch. <laughs> I'm close. No, no, that's the last one I used to describe that. that oh, was, that might have been interesting. 150 years ago, freak shows were based on people paying, wanting to come and see the kind of the different, the strange, and and the unique. And I think whilst this isn't this isn't in a tent in in Victorian London, it certainly is people who have a very specific taste or fetish for something that they want to see, who are willing to part money for it. So there are definite parallels there. I'm seeing some ropes down there. So we're either gonna wrap Christmas presents or we're doing some bondage. Oh what yeah, love it. love it. What do you like? Oh, you're gonna do some stuff with me, right? Crippled people are kinky too. I think Cindy is a consenting adult who's meeting a very niche, niche demand. He's a good roper. A friend of mine suggested I get into porn and that there's a gap in the Are market. you? Endowed? I'm just curious. I'm sorry. I had yeah, to. Yeah, no, I, 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 it's two inches from the ground. <laughs> so, yeah, that's why they call me the elephant man. <laughs> oh, you could do it. I mean, people are curious. So, are you going to do porn? Are you considering it? I, I don't know. My mom Googles me. Oh, my God. <laughs> that, that would be scary. I know, right? Oh, what's Hannah been up to? I don't know. That would be a hot scene. I don't know, that. Cousin Gene. Let's have a look. Oh, my word. What is he doing to that? Oh! Yeah, yeah. People are gonna look anyways. Might as well give them something to look at. Yeah, my inner showman is slowly winning winning the day. Wait, mm. my tits are getting squashed. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Okay, give me a look. <laughs> no, I hate you stuff. <laughs> I know, it's okay. So give Adam some rope to hold in his hand like he did it to me. Okay, Girl. so to be a true, you have to like show a fist, wrap right. it around, and like, Give it the look. Ooh. For sure. Oh, your hair. Yeah, yeah, okay, you know, good. tension. Tension like this. That's it. That's yeah, it. you come here. <laughs> it, this could well be the modern version of a freak show. And I think kind of at, at first, my kind of PC head kicked in and said, you're sending us back 10 years. But kind of the more I hung out with Cindy and talked to her and helped tie her up and stuff, Kind of, the more I got over that. He's thinking, I could get some freaky stuff going on. <laughs> <laughs> Say your word, my dear. Say your word. I lost my bondage virginity in Los Angeles. Ooh, kinky. We've gone from kind of exploitation to sex exploitation in, in one fell swoop. I did quite enjoy it just because of the, because of the experience. <clears throat> like, I think, I, think if you, I think kind of there's that little bit in everyone's brain that goes, what am I trying that just once? And uh, kind of when, when am I ever going to get to have a bonded session with a paraplegic again? I'm probably not. My trip across the States is almost over, and it's given me a lot of food for thought. I think I came to America just to learn about freak shows, kind of shake my head a little bit, and then go home. But then, in a weird way, I found my own, my own liberty. I've learned a lot more about myself doing this than I thought I would. Now I've got to put it all into, into practice. If I'm going to flaunt my freak on stage, I'm going to need some expert advice. Matt Fraser's a Brit who now lives in New York. He's one of the world's highest earning freak show performers. I used to love fairgrounds. 
I used to want to work on the fairgrounds. Matt made a name for himself as Seal Boy in the TV show American Horror Story, but he's also renowned for his daring creature cabaret act. If anybody feels delicate around the issue of disability and uh, crippledness and mutations and things like that, you're probably at the wrong show, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Matt Fraser, how are you doing, sir? Very good, you well? thank you. Yes, Excellent. I'm very good. I'm very good indeed. Out of all the kind of folks we've spoken to, you are the one who's who's made it, who's kind of cashed in in a big way. Have you ever met someone like me before? No, I've not met anyone with the Elephant Man-esque facial features, such as yourself. Just because I'm a crip doesn't mean I didn't think, OK, you're going to be meeting the guy. He's going to have a kind of elephant manny face. And then I saw you, and I'm like, oh, I could kiss that. Is it the same impairment as Joseph Merrick had? Potentially, yes. OK. He, he either had, he had either what I have, neurofibromatosis type 1, Proteus syndrome, or both. Oh, look at that. Quite the rake with his top button done up. Gosh, I wish I'd known him. Don't you? Well, oh, yeah, yes, yeah. Yes, Naveen, you're now. the... No, otherwise... Oh, I'm, I'm the closest you're going to get. I'll be honest. Well, I'll be honest. No, no, you're good enough for me. What do you think of the word freak? For me, freak is now a positive word. You know what we've got? Natural born freaks. It's deformed. And that's the stuff of horror films and nightmares and scary stuff. Oh, it has become tracking. for me something I'm proud of being. And now when people shout, yo, freak show, I turn and I go, thank you very much. Yes, I am. So do I need to get out of the freak closet? I would suggest to you that you acknowledge that you're probably the modern day elephant man. For mm -hmm. most people in a sideshow, that's what you're going to be. Yeah. Right? And I would talk about him. It would give you power, but it would also give yeah. them their pound of flesh. Put a few gags in. People have got to know that you can laugh at yourself. Yeah. Um, I say that clearly because I've got no thumbs, I have no opposable digit. Now, this means that I have to do some things with two hands that most other men can find they can adequately perform with just the one hand. Obviously, everything is thinking about wanking. And then I go, wait, of course, I go, I'm talking about holding a screwdriver or picking up a, a pint of beer. But seeing as you're all obviously thinking something else, you should know that I've got a very supple back and I'm clever with my feet. That gets a big laugh. And then I go, but I wank with my hands. And I get a second <laughs> laugh of it. Nice. Yeah. If I was to give you one note, you have to deal with your face. It has to be the baseline for your act. That is the bottom line. Yeah, and the, the, I suppose there's no better way of facing your demons than facing your demons. I've just thought of something. Mm -hmm. In your act that you're going to do, yeah. are you going to use a hood? I don't know. I, I, I maybe would totally I make you, make you, force you, um, I have a hood. And then, you know, I mean, the world is literally your oyster. Oh, you did? <laughs> this is what happens when you're on TV in, in America. I know. Hey, how you doing? Nice to meet you. Come on, bring it in. Bring it in. I'll stand up for you. Got it. Thank you so you're much. You're very welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care now. You too. Bye. If you like someone, you're remotely attracted to them, and they get on stage, you fancy them, exactly a minimum of 10 times more than you did before they got on the stage. Okay. And if you're a single man, believe me, you'll get action. Um, I, am, I am currently a single man. I would say hit the stage as soon as possible. Let's do this. Back home in London, I'm off to meet artistic director Gary Robson, who specializes in training physically disabled performers and will help me rehearse my act. Really good to meet you, sir. Yeah. I can't control why people will come. I can't control what they'll leave thinking. I'll keep flexing the net. They come thinking I'm an idiot who can't speak. Oh, 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 oh. And they're just there to come and laugh at the elephant man. <laughs> <laughs> and I can enlighten them and help them see past that. Good, keep at it, go on. Then maybe something good has come of it. We're dancing! Yeah. <laughs> so have you written something?
Yeah, I, the idea, the concept is kind of the true story of the Elephant Man, but also telling the story of the kind of the journey I've been on as well. Freak shows are all about transformation. It's kind of Adam Pearson, but it's Adam Pearson as the Elephant Man. Yeah. I know who the Elephant Man is. I spent years avoiding him. I don't know what I was afraid of. He is, to all intents and purposes, the king of the freak shows. But he is dead, and I am not. This is now the point of no, no return. Tonight should be good. I'm, on one hand, I'm looking forward to it, and the other way, in another way, I'm nervous as anything. If you had told me this would have been the end of the journey, when I was standing opposite the Elephant Man skeleton at the Royal in London, I didn't think it would end, end this way. I thought I'd go on a journey and be like, yeah, features are bad. I told y'all so. And, you know, roll credits, that's the end of it. Maybe get Missy Elliott playing in the background. Whereas this is a complete 180. I'm definitely going to go through with this. Ladies and gentlemen, the terrible elephant man. Let's address the uh, elephant in the room for a second. <laughs> the kids in the playground used to make me do impressions of the elephant man every day, and then just come up to me and say, not as good as John Hurt. <laughs> as you heard, I've been around America meeting various freak show performers. I met a wolf boy in Mexico who said I was the first elephant man for 150 years, and I should be proud. I met a lobster boy in Texas who said I need to break out of the freak closet. And I met a saw boy in New York that said if I got on stage and performed, I would definitely get sex. <laughs> so here I am. <laughs> Ladies. <laughs> Gentlemen. <laughs> Anyone? <laughs> Anyone at all? So, it's been an, an amazing journey. I'd like to say thank you to my mum for having me. Perfectly imperfect. 50% man, 50% elephant, 100% awesome. And in conclusion, I am not an animal. Performing does something unique to you. In that one moment, I got what everyone meant when they said it was empowering. But now I am going to go and I am going to get my promised sex. Instead of running from it, I need to own it. If you offered me the chance to change my face, I would not, would not take you up on it. It's very much my, kind of my calling card. I guess I've made it work for me. Whether I like it or not, I am a freak. <laughs>